Hello everybody, today I will discuss about the um, other metal forming operations. Uh, for example, today I am supposed to discuss about the bending process. So, bending is basically sheet metal forming operation. So, in this case very thin sheet can be bended with the application of the load. Here you can see with the using the punch and die assembly, I can put uh, this punch over the thin sheet and to make it bend at a certain angle. So, uh, since it is associated with the uh, sheet metal operations, so of course, when you try to perform the building operation, we and this de deformation behavior acts as a kind of the elastoplastic in nature. So, after releasing of the load, even we bend in the uh, this desired angle, then some kind of the, uh, the recovery, elastic recovery is associated with this process. So, that part has to taken into account to design the bending process. So, but we define the bending uh, operations with reference to a particular the neutral axis. So, along the neutral axis there is a stress is basically 0. So, we take this as a reference line and with reference to that the upper side it will associated with the upper side of this uh, uh, this sheet metal. Uh, it is associated with some compressive stress and lower set it is uh, associated with the uh, tensile stress. For example, this is the sheet thickness and this is the neutral axis. So, in this bending with the application of the load from the top, it will bend. So, this part, the upper part above the neutral axis, it is always associated with some kind of the compressive stress. Of course, distribution can be different or it can be uniform distribution, but lower side, it is basically associated with the, uh, this tensile uh, uh, state of the stress. So, this is the typical behavior of the bending process and the shape of the bend component can be either U shape or it can be the V shape depending upon the applications or depending upon the requirement, we can do the the bending or this thing. But of course, you remember this bending operation is not purely elastic, but it is a elastoplastic in nature. That means, plastic deformation is also required to perform the bending operations. So, when uh, we consider the sheet metal and we could we can see there are 5 different type methods we usually use to, to bend the, the sheet metal. And here you can see that one is the V bending. So, is a basically safe and one is the air bending, uh, air bending may be uh, in that cases air bending means so we can use the air pressure to bend uh, the uh, sheet metal and the bottom bending or edge bending. So, different area geometric part we can use the bending operation and roll bending. Roll bending means the help of a roller we can try to bend the component, but in principle if some amount of the plastic deformation will be there uh, associated with the bending operations. So, here you see this is the neutral axis with respect to neutral axis and uh, this is the this uh, bend uh, the radius of curvature of the bend and we define the bend angle alpha take so 1 at 80 degree uh, minus alpha dot and of course, we can even calculate the bending force also. So, bending force F k V f is just k b f is some factor. So, depending upon the type of the bending operation, if it is edge bending it is uh, uh, 0.33, if it is the V bending it is 1.33 and remaining the ultimate tensile strength width and thickness uh, of the sheet metal we can consider uh, D is the die opening dimension. So, of course, this radius of curvature is basically this R it depends or radius de uh, decided by the shape of the this uh, this die. So, here also you can use the die. But we do the analysis with reference to the neutral axis. One side it will be the uh, compressive stress associated with this exactly this bending part, and other side it will be associated with the tensile stress depending upon the nature of which direction or radius of curvature associated with the uh, bending operation. Now, here you see that during bending the metal is uh, on the outside of the neutral axis is stress. So, outside of the so initially, for example, this is the initial position and then uh, this is the uh, final position. So, outside of this thing we stretch in extra stretching is required because we allow the extra length of the sheet during the bending operation because uh, which is known as the uh, bend allowance and uh, it is because there must be some kind of the elastic recovery is associated with that. So, that is why we try to do look into some extra length has to be considered during the bending operation. So, we have to count and depending upon the elastic recovery of this particular material. So, the extra length can be calculated. And uh, we see in other words uh, and this actually this elastic recovery in case of the bending operation is, it is known as the elastic spring back. So, definitely we design of the bending operation we have to consider the elastic spring back effect and uh, this uh, spring back effect occurs when the materials angularly tries to return to the original shape. So, for example, if we bend certain uh, material uh, this is the initial position we bend this angle 
now when you release the load then it will come back to this position so it will the some some kind of the recovery angle it is associated with the bending operation so that is known as a spring back effect so we need to calculate the spring back effect for a proper design of the uh, bending operation so spring back e equal to uh, bending angle and the, and the and the bent angle so bending angle we are looking for and bent angle uh, after releasing the load what is the angle so this difference between these two is basically the spring back angle associated with the bending operation there is another process in the metal forming that is called the thermoforming so thermoforming means so definitely it is associated with the not only the forming operation so forming operation is assisted with the some kind of the thermal uh, phenomena thermal phenomena in the sense that some kind of the heating is involved to the component which can facilitate the forming operation so other way also we can overall uh, the combination of the thermal load and the mechanical load to make this thermoforming operation it is maybe uh, more uh, economical or more uh, easier to perform the forming operation in any component as compared to the only the uh, application of the mechanical load. So, here we can see it is also associated with usually the very uh, seat thickness, uh, very thin seat. So, in this case hitting the seat first is this thing or you can see even it can be do mono material or co extrusion or a, a laminate component can also be uh, applied uh, this kind of the heating of the seat I mean to say the thermoforming operations. So, in this cases thickness and drawing into over it. So, basically we can see from a uh, rigid semi or shape for example, this is the seat and we can draw it uh, we can heat this sample we can heat the sample and we can draw it. Uh, to take the desired shape and here. So, to draw this one we use some kind of the vacuum is applied here. So, we create the vacuum and at the when creating the vacuum the seat is drawing. So, drawing of the seat will be more easier if we heated the seat up to certain temperature. So, that will help to perform the uh, thermoforming operation. So, here see the steps are first making the seat, seat has to be prepared normally by the cast extrusion method. So, first we prepare the seat and then heating the seat, next step is the heating the seat. Third step forming the pack by stretching the seat either into or over a mold. So, over a mold we can try to stretch the seat, then cooling the form packaging. So, we can try to this if you see uh, the steps is like that and this uh, it is a uh, placing and heating and then creating the vacuum and over the top also. Uh, this uh, helps to stretching the seat also uh, the heated seat at the same time vacuum is applied and gradually try to take the shape of the mold cavity and once it is done then finally we create the vacuum such that exact take the shape and the because of the air pressure supplied on the seat. So, these are the steps associated with the thermoforming operation. So, finally once it is get this uh, thermoforming operations then we will get uh, this cutting and trimming can uh, also be required for the multi unit molded seat into make into individual pieces. So, that is an and uh, this can be carried out at the same time at the forming process basically trimming operation is basically associated with the system. So, to make the individual component or the trimming can also be done. Once it is done then printing or decorating as required on, on the seat. So, these are the typical steps associated with the uh, thermoforming operations. We can look into the advantage and disadvantage of the thermoforming operation. One is the advantage is the tooling cost is not expensive that is the one uh, part then the and suitable for the large part basically if you try to handle very large component and which is made of the thin sheet then it this process is very much suitable for to handle this uh, large component. Thin wall component can be made by this method only. So, only thin wall component can be used in these cases and suitable for the small number of parts maybe if you want to make some prototypes in that cases this method is suitable low capital cost and very quickly the mold can be uh, changed uh, whenever uh, as per the design criteria. But limitation also this process is that this process is confined to the use of the sheet material the only limitation is this process is applicable only for the sheet metal and all parts to be made by this process must have the uniform wall thickness. So, if uh, this process is basically based on the thin sheet as well as the uniform thickness of the sheet. So, if there is a non uniform thickness of the sheet then in that cases probably this process is not that much of effective. 
So, ribs or mounting bosses cannot be made using this particular uh, these uh, thermoforming operations. So, here are some examples of the thermoforming operation we can see all these processes components very easily uh, can manufacture uh, using the thermoforming operation and here you can see the thermoforming operations is basically uh, it is applicable uh, for the polymeric material polymer or plastic component we can use uh, the very effectively the thermoforming operations uh, for the processing of this kind of the uh, very common components uh, that we can use in the everyday life. So, this type of component is actually manufactured by the thermoforming operations. Now, we will try to look into another topic uh, associated with the forming operation which is known as the super plastic forming process. So, super plastic. So, plastic means under the plastic deformation is there, but in this cases we consider the super plastic that means extent of the deformation is large enough. So, when there is a associated to the extensive or excessive plastic deformation during the processing of the material and which is elongation can be typically can be more than 200 percent. So, in that cases this process is known as the super plastic forming process, but other conditions to occur the super plastic forming process is the temperature. So, temperature should be high enough above the 50 percent of the melting point temperature and of course, during this deformation plastic deformation there prior to failure that means before failure there might not be any kind of the without necking it will be able to deform more than more than 200 percent elongation. So, that is the conditions or maybe I can say that uh, this is the uh, definition uh, for the super plastic formation, super plastic forming. So, it is a very manufacturing process but producing very complex very thin sheet component complex and thin sheet components we can use the effectiveness of the super plastic forming operations. So, SPF is manufacturers can produce complex structural components and in this cases without needing any kind of the welding or riveting parts together. So, that means if a, a relatively large component at the same time the very complex components we usually perform the welding joining in for manufacture these two components or more components individually then we try to weld it or try to join it together. But if we uh, in super plastic forming operations this kind of the, the elimination of the welding or riveting is possible. Super plastic deformation is characterized by the low flow stress. So, flow stress value is low and this is combined with the high uniformity of the plastic flows. So, uniform deformation is maintained over a uh, long range of the elongations. So, that elongation is happened over a low value of the flow stress. So, that is the typical characteristics associated with the super plastic formation. So, that is why commercial uh, of course, it is having some commercial interest of the super plastic forming operations we see uh, later on the this thing. But two basic requirements must be fulfilled to achieve the super plastic flow one is the the super plastic. So, when you try to looking into that expecting that this material can uh, have super plastic flow. So, co one condition is that it should have very small grain size the material might, might be having must be having very small grain size which is typically smaller than 10 micrometer. So, in that cases we can we, it is the this one requirement to perform the super plastic forming operation for a uh, component. Second is that the super plasticity is basically diffusion control process and operating within the range of the very high temperature it is a diffusion control process and that means the, the deformation should happen uh, not too fast basically deformation we should allow relatively slowly. So, when you performing the deformation slowly that means the we are allowing to perform the diffusion operation. So, that is why it is a diffusion control process and of course, it works within a over relatively high range of the temperature. So, these are the typical requirement to perform the super plastic forming operation. Now, here we can see that advantage of the super plastic formation process and see uh, in this case see uh, how it works. So, say this is the sheet basically blank is there and we pressurize forming gas is there we supply the uniform pressure it will creating and this is the die cavity. So, die cavity is there and then with the application of the forming gas the pressurized gas it will try to deform the material. So, deform the in some cases may be depending upon the shape of the complex in some cases large amount of the deformation is required. So, that is why in this case we allow to perform the plastic uh, super plastic deformation to occur. So, large deformation occurs and further increment of the pressurized forming gas it takes the shape of the as per the uh, mole cavity. So, here you see that the large amount of the deformation is basically is associated uh, in the super plastic forming operation. But main advantage of this process is the 
cost saving from multiple components from in a single part. So, maybe multiple components can be performed in a single system uh, in that sense the cost saving is associated with that. Multiples can be produced in, in single operation and capacity to produce a very larger, very longer and the lighter parts without joints and oils without any kind of the joining or welding process. Uh, it can be this uh, super plastic formation can be performed uh, the very complex shape of the component. Uh, in this case one another thing is that of course, so we are uh, most of the metal we have almost some elastic recovery is always there, but in this case super plastic formation since deformation happens relatively high temperature. So, spring work is effect is there, but spring work effect is very very small. So, we can neglect the spring work effect in this case. So, one tool is required that means we see the only the one complete shape of the die cavity will helps to create any kind of the bring the complexity during the super plastic forming operation. But disadvantage is that it has to be performed at the relatively high temperature at least melting um, above the 50 percent of the melting point temperature. Some cases non uniform thickness distribution uh, when operating at the high strain rate it is difficult to sometimes maintain to uniform uh, thickness when you try to deform in the high rate of deformation. So, high strain rate is very high. So, in that cases sometimes it is difficult to maintain the uniform deformation uh, along the thickness direction. Uh, of course, this is diffusion control process that is why this is the very slow process, slow manufacturing process as compared to the stamping, war forming and the hydro forming. With reference to that this is the relatively slow process and heated and the form material such as aluminum are susceptible to wearing a or wearing or the galling effect. This is the one kind of the defect uh, specifically associated with the aluminum. Uh, because it is uh, this process is usually happens at the relatively high temperature. So, that is can be a problem associated with this thing, but of course, apart from all these things this process is very much suitable if you try to uh, produce the very complex shape of the component. Now, we will try to look into sheet metal forming operation in general. Uh, sheet metal forming is basically operation the sheet metal forming operations uh, here the we involve the plastic deformation owing to the permanent plastic flow is associated with this sheet metal event. So, in this case elastic strains are generally very very small in this cases and most of the cases we can neglect the effect of the elastic part elastic recovery associated with the sheet metal forming operation. But of course, there is an exception in case when the forming uh, process are unloaded thereby result in the large elastic shape in case of the uh, spring back. So, uh, of course, we can say that elastic strains are very small, but elastic spring work effect is uh, actually associated with the uh, forming operations and specifically this is uh, more important which case the elastic strain or elastic stress is much more uh, for particular material. So, in that cases elastic recovery will also be more in that particular material. So, in this the sheet metal forming is basically associated with three different types of the loading conditions. Uh, for the two different sheet metal forming operations. One is the uniaxial tension, plane strain deformation can happen even biaxial stretching. All these different type of the loading usually associated with the sheet metal uh, forming operations. So, now uh, one operation for the sheet metal is the shearing operation. So, shearing is the we use the punch and die system to shear to shear or to cut off along the edge uh, of the punch uh, between the die of course, might be having some uh, some kind of the clearance. So, this and this cutting is usually happens in the shearing action. So, that is it is a shearing operation open shearing sheet metal cut off operation along a straight line between the two cutting edge. So, we can make some clearance between the punch and die and this is the sheet metal and when it is passes through here and then some clearance is there it is a cut the shearing happens at the at this edge and that that the shear part is uh, separated. So, this is the basic principle associated with the shearing operation. So, here shearing force is there and that high high enough. So, it should exceed the ultimate shear strength. So, basically so you need to overcome the ultimate shear strength value of this particular material for the shearing to occur. Now, excessive applied shear stress cause fracture and the separation at the cut location also. So, in that cases if you put much more load then it can create some kind of the fracture or separation at the cut location in this uh, particular process. So, basically shearing involves the moving blade applying pressure and the then against a fixed blade. So, I say punch is the you can consider this is moving blade and uh, die is the here the fixed blade in, in this case and with the apply load or, or pressure means apply uh, loading on the punch. So, the, of course, so shearing to happen over a clearance must be there uh, between the edges uh, to 
sharing to happen between these two. For example, suppose this is the clearance, the clearance is between the shear, uh, the, uh, this is the seat and this is the clearance. So, over the clearance the sharing will happen, it is sharing duct elevator sharing will happen along this edge and the sharing will usually happens, basically cut off usually happens between the punch and die for a sheet metal. Now, there is also one process which is known as the blanking process. So, in this case the blanking involves the removal of the workpiece from the primary metal sheet or the strip which is punched with the closed cutting path. Of course, sharing will happen here. The cut out material is that is removed is called as the blank operations. For example, uh, this is the main material and we can uh, material for the further this is the blanking. So, we cut this from here, we, we cut uh, from the scrap uh, this particular part. So, this process is known as the blanking. Of course, the shearing action is there along the edge. So, these are the blanking operation, we get this is the blanking operation. But if we uh, material for the further work and we, we can we can see uh, this part uh, is known as the this punching operation. So, here we see this is the cut and we cut it, take it out. So, this one take it out, this is known as the the blanking operation. In blanking operation then cut out part, basically blank part is used for further processing. This blank part is further processing that means this blank part take it, we can perform the uh, punching operation on that also. So, that is why if you consider the blanking and punching uh, versus parching, then blanking operation the die diameter is the same as the blank diameter uh, in this case. So, diameter of the blank component is the depends on the blanking operation die diameter is the same as the blank diameter. So, blank diameter is basically associated with the die diameter or punch diameter is the basically uh, this one. So, this is the punch diameter. So, this punch diameter should be lower than that of the this uh, die diameter. So, punch diameter is basically dB the die diameter minus the clearance 2 into C, C clearance is the one side uh, clearance is C this thing. So, therefore, for blanking, blanking diameter dB and the blanking punch diameter dB minus 2 C. For punching operation, punching diameter dH uh, plus 2 C and punching punch diameter it will be the uh, dB. So, this way we can see this is the, the difference between the blanking and punching operation associated with the, the sheet metal forming operation. Next, we try to discuss about the spinning process. So, sheet metal spinning is basically here with the performing the forming operations and uh, we using the tool and at the same time we, we can spin with the rotating uh, part with respect to the symmetry component uh, and uh, this sheet is attached with this symmetry component and we, we rotate it and then we, we, we just move the tool to take the different shape to perform the forming operation. So, sheet metal spinning is basically axially symmetric component it is produced rotating by the clamping sheet which is usually very high speed and pressuring it against a mandrel. So, here we can see this sheet metal is basically over the mandrel we place it pressuring it and at the same time it is having high, high rotational speed of the desired shape. The mandrel is fixed. So, here this is the mandrel is fixed on the spindle. So, spindle is try to rotate it of the lathe machine and the seat is basically held in position using the tail stroke. So, this is the tail stroke with the keeping the positioning of the uh, seat metal uh, this thing and then we keep on rotating at high speed. Now, we apply as the seat and the mandrel both are together rotate. So, the operator applies the localized pressure. So, here we apply the, uh, the spinning tool here with the to, to we apply the local pressure here to perform the forming operations. So, this is the forming tool causing the seat metal flow the progressively towards the mandrel. So, in, in this case uh, this is the when it is rotating using this tool is take the shape over the mandrel and try to deform the shape in such a way that it will take the shape of the uh, mandrel. So, this is basically known as the, the spinning operation here the both bending and stretching both mechanism are, are active uh, to perform the spinning uh, process. Then we try to look into uh, the incremental sheet forming uh, approach. In this case, the incremental sheet forming is basically the progressively applying the plastic deformation to the material sheet metal we using the forming tool. But this forming tool is basically numerically control the forming tool. So here, CNC action of the milling machine can be utilized or can be industrial robot can be utilized to perform this incremental forming operations. So in this case, probably this forming tool is there and this sheet metal is there and the blank holder is there. Uh, in this case, this forming tool perform the incremental localized deformation. So, this part, 
this localized deformation will happen and which is controlled by the uh, forming tool and uh, of the seed while moving along the predefined trajectory. So, basically this moving of the uh, forming tool which is usually controlled by the CNC and over the predefined trajectory it moves and when it is moving at that time the localized position is try to deform the, the material. So, uh, gradually try to deform the material. So, in this cases we need, need to see the very big die shape is not required. So, rather we just control the path of the this tool using the CNC control and to take a to perform the forming operation over a large thin sheet this we perform the um, uh, forming operation using this uh, system. So, in this case since it is moving in a very small small, small step and very localized deformation happens that is why it is called as the uh, this incremental uh, seat forming. So, in this case seat blank is mounted on the seat holder we can see this is the seat blank it is holded for the blank holder and the forming tool is pressed here this is the forming tool is pressed into the seat in a control way control control to deform the latter it try to deform it and produce the desired shape. So, therefore, uh, it is not like a spinning the in this case the seat is not rotated actually the spinning we can perform the similar kind of the exercise, but in the spinning the seat was rotating, but in this case there is no rotation of the seat. Uh, rather we can use the mandrel also not required in this cases. So, that means to get the shape we do not need any kind of the mandrel and of course, non axis symmetric components can be produced. So, any kind of the uh, uh, non axis symmetric that means non uh, even for the non axis symmetric component can also be produced using this particular uh, process without using any kind of the mandrel or without using any kind of the uh, any kind of the uh, rotation uh, uh, of the seat. So, that is why it is different from the, the spinning operation. So, we can see the advantage of the incremental seat forming operation is that first is that process can be executed using simply CNC milling machines also. So, with a negligible set uh, cost setup and nowadays CNC milling machine is available uh, with a reasonable cost also. This process is very economical for a small batch size production. So, in this case the small batch size production that means that would say very specific uh, metal forming operations or very very complex shapes or, or maybe we see very non symmetric kind of component if you want to produce and then this is the one of the option using the incremental seat forming operation. It is ex exactly the flexible compared to the conventional seat forming operation process and at the same time the minimum size of the lot can become 1. So, minimum uh, uh, size that means we, we can say that is a very big structure uh, uh, can be uh, produced here. Despite being used the batch type production it can be possible to use the batch type production, but incremental uh, seat forming is very useful for manufacturing uh, parts of the old machinery. Old machinery which are otherwise impossible to form due to unavailability of the forming die. So, when there is a difficulties the problem of uh, availability of the forming die in that case the incremental seat forming is the uh, solution for that to produce even for the very old machinery component which is probably in that cases the particular die is not available uh, because in, in when you try to perform conventional forming operation we need uh, the the this uh, die. So, here the elimination of the die is uh, uh, because incremental seat forming we can eliminate the use of the die. So, local deformation and the tool sheet makes the process capable of the greater formability. So, basically it focus on the local deformation. So, that is why this process is actually designed. So, here this brings the more uh, greater formability than conventional forming operation process extends in in existence of the positive of the negative die. So, basically there is no need of this kind of the uh, die the forming process also smaller than the required by other sheet metal forming operation. For example, like drawing, drawing we need a large amount of the forces uh, to workers uh, to perform uh, to reduce the size of the wear, but in this case the relatively less force is required as compared to the other forming process. So, here I, I end uh, this particular processes and uh, next class I will to discuss the uh, remaining part of the, the metal forming operation of this particular module. So, thank you very much for your kind attention.